Welcome! And today's video is a compilation of lost or technological glitches in other videos that I've tried to put out. So I've just salvaged them and I'll present them in this kind of crude fashion. I hope you enjoy. Soldier Field is an American football stadium located in the near south side of Chicago, Illinois. It opened in 1924 and is the home field of the Chicago Bears. They moved there in 1971 and the stadium had a capacity of 61,000. The stadium's interior was mostly demolished and rebuilt as part of a major renovation project in 2002 which modernized the facility but lowered seating capacity while also causing it to be delisted as a National Historic Landmark. So let's have a little look at this field. Now here it is in present times and let's have a look in older times. Pretty amazing. And it's not just the field that we see, but it's these Greco-Roman structures on either side, and this glorious building in the background, and really amazing. I mean, they're telling us it opened in 1924. It was designed in 1919. The stadium cost 13 million to construct, or the equivalence of 182 million in 2015. In the earliest configuration, it was able to seat 74,000. More additions raised the seating to over 100,000. And here it is in 1988. And here is a photo in 2002 during renovations and here in 1926 pretty amazing and let's have a look at a modern depiction so it seems as if the original structure is still there to some extent and they've just built this bowl within the original stadium and really seems to have lost a lot of its original look and so did this have another purpose at some point and we come in and turn it into a stadium and now they do show us some pictures of the parent construction and here we do see these men, perhaps uh, resurfacing concrete. I don't see, I don't see them, you know, creating this or pouring this concrete with these small buckets. I mean, with these small buckets, this is going to take you longer than a lifetime with these little buckets. I mean, you would need some serious trucks to come in. And it seems like what we're seeing in this photo is a repair. And right here, we see the dilapidation, or what appears to be the dilapidation. And I think what we're seeing here is just simple repairs, just patching, patching it up and eventually they would build right over this, right on top of it. And really, the original one could house more than the current one, from what I understand. And the story is that they just never really knew what to do with it. They used it as a racetrack, they used it for various sporting events and some ridiculous events. I spent several hours working on this video only to lose it 
There are certain subjects that I just seem to not be able to talk about. Every time I try to make a video on them, something happens to the video. And it's so strange that it almost seems supernatural. And this is like my third or so attempt at this video, and I'm almost disheartened, and I don't even think it's even going to work. But in any case, um, you know, it usually involves when I talk about characters that I believe are part or descendants of the controllers and perhaps the inheritors that were in the know-how at the time. And one of these has to do with with Andrew Carnegie and the all of the Carnegie everythings that we see all over you know in the story I, I made a video on his history and it was a pretty hokey history and you know they tell us how he begins working at 13 and this is the home that he's born in and this is him and his little brother at 16 so apparently at 16 he begins to amass his fortune and you know he rises up and up and up in the ranks and he builds you know this massive steel empire and it just seems like a silly and too good to be true kind of story it really does seem ridiculous but we're not going to get into it today but what I just wanted to focus on was again the Carnegie everythings you know and apparently he donated you know they attribute all of these wonderful structures to him you know he just had so much money and he just uh, built everything you know and what we see is uh, this old architecture and this old history being hidden in the Carnegie name and you know we have this wonderful story of Mr. Carnegie and the philanthropist that he was and this you know great heroic rags to riches story and it just it's all too good to be true and then when we look at these Carnegie everythings and there are hundreds if not perhaps thousands actually like too many to even with a with a grand fortune and we're not going to get into all of it today I just wanted to scratch the surface and introduce you guys to the Carnegie ridiculous narrative let's just have a little click at this one I can't resist and yes absolutely amazing just tucked away in a little probably overly expensive university teaching this very false history about the very buildings that they're in so really amazing and it goes on and on but I didn't want to talk about the Carnegie everythings today I actually had lost uh, a video that I made on William Hurst and his father George Hurst and this is an equally fascinatingly ridiculous story about Mr. Hurst inheriting his father's fortune and they used to come camping up on this land in the middle of nowhere in the middle of California in between Los Angeles and San Francisco and finally when his father died and left his fortune he immediately began building this amazing castle in the middle of nowhere in California and I think really what we can see is that this is an older structure and yet when we look at it from Google from above we can see that perhaps just this and a lot of the architecture and statues and decorative features found around the property are original and a lot has been added on a lot must have been destroyed and to present day you can get tours of this Hearst castle 
And it is amazing inside. And perhaps too amazing for the narrative that they give us. Even though they do give tours in this building, you're no longer allowed to enter through the main entrance here because of a ridiculous story, as always, that uh, they had to do renovations, and the man who did the renovations said he would never again do renovations because it was so difficult. And so they decided to shut down the front entrance. And really, that piques my curiosity. What is going on there? And perhaps we could find some photos showing that. And here it is sitting on the hillside. And there are a lot of, you know, modern, what we would expect to see in California, even though they are older. You know, these are from the early 1900s. These were built all around. And I believe part of this Hearst Castle is also additions. But what we see is something older here. And something that even they tell us was a model from a cathedral in Spain. And here is the cathedral in Spain. The Church of Santa Maria. And they both appear to have the same amount of aging. There isn't much difference. And so you can see what perhaps was the original structure. And the original structure would have come down here and over this way. And then this appears to be addition. Or renovation. Some original at the bottom. But much, much has been added to that backside as compared to the front here. And a little look at the inside and really really intricate and I believe that this appears to be wood really amazing and no details were spared in this amazing castle and here's a look at the swimming pool and this I believe seems original especially with the weathering and the cracking, to me, this cracking seems, this cracking seems old. And this doesn't seem like something that was built within a hundred years. Not at all. And perhaps some sections have been replaced. But this has the look of something old and weathered. Really amazing. And here's a little look at the Biltmore Estates in Asheville, North Carolina. Built between 1889 and 1895. And here it is. And here it is in the 1900s. And just absolutely exquisite detail. Does not seem to be a modern, or at least in the 1900s, a modern structure. This entails all of the oldest principles of European architecture and not North Carolinan. And once again, I don't know if someone could replicate this today. I really don't know if we could call somebody up, a construction company, and have something like this built today. I really don't. And I don't know if we could in the early 1900s or late 1800s. Regardless, it is absolutely impressive. Left unfinished with bare brick walls, the music room was not completed and open to the public till 1976. It showcases a mantle designed by Hunt and a large engraving by Albert Durer called the Triumphal Arch. The mantle has been stored in the stable for over 80 years. So here they're telling us they're storing this away, this mantle. They're not really sure exactly what this is, but it doesn't look like something that should be tied to the Vanderbilts. But again, just like the Carnegies, 
the Vanderbilt's become a convenient plug for a lot of these misplaced histories. And this is really fascinating. And I'm just going to put this aside for later. 1515 or I-515. And here real quick, I just wanted to have a little peek at some of these old tunnels. You know, these are found in every major city. And it gives us an idea of perhaps an older civilization that existed right underneath our feet. And seldom do we explore these tunnels. You know, maybe when people are young, they find some entrances, and yet how much of our history is actually underneath us? While we scour the surface, and even while some scour what is above, there is a whole mystery lying underneath our feet. And I encourage everybody to have a little peek under your city if you can get a chance. And some really interesting things on the internet, uh, you know, maybe you don't actually have to go. You could just check out some of these old videos. Here is a Salt Lake City tunnel. So they seem to have been resurfaced, some of them. You know, this has definitely been updated. But in some cases, what we see underneath these cities is actual roads and storefronts to the left and to the right and then somehow a new level finds itself on top of this city and we are walking amongst the ruins below our feet and this little piece of star fort here that we can see was shared by richard lopez and I encourage you to check out his channel. There's a link below. And here we have the coordinates for what appears to be the remnants of a star fort. And really amazing. This thing is in the middle of the desert. And how many of these are out there? And how many people are hunting for these? And, and this is just an incredible find in the middle of nowhere. It appears that this mountain is half bearing it and really amazing. I don't really know what to make of such things. Typically star forts are found in areas with water and this thing is just massive. Absolutely massive and it would be interesting to explore this in another video. And finally, I just wanted to conclude with a, another little piece of a video that I made in which I completely lost the sound to. And I just want to revisit this little segment of the video in Ohio. And this was the Soldier Monument in Ohio. And uh, earlier in the video, we looked at the Soldier Field in Chicago. But here uh, around the Soldier Monument in which this photo that I'm showing here is showing a monument that is only 10 years old. And what I talked about in another part was how this seems much older than 10 years old and it seems as if the style is not at all what they would erect in Ohio. But really what I wanted to focus on in this part was the landscaping. And the landscaping and all these little symbols that we see around this soldier monument are really interesting. And immediately when I just showed this star fort a minute ago, it reminded me that I'd wanted to share this in a video and uh, like I said, it just didn't happen. And since this is almost a video on videos that failed one way or another based on uh, glitches, I thought I'd just throw this in real quick. And yes, what we can see are these amazing symbols and more importantly, 
What I want to show is the star fort. And one of these symbols here that I'll point to in one second is a star fort. And there it is. It's the one behind the pole behind that uh, either electric or telephone pole or telegraph. I'm not sure. But yes, that is a little star fort. And it's exactly the uh, proportions and ge geometry that we would see in not all star forts. They all have uh, differences. But really interesting, you know, that we would get a not only this uh, amazing monument and this amazing architecture all over the city, but we would also get little star forts in the landscaping. And not only do we have star forts, but we just have a lot of uh, symbolism. Uh, in an earlier part, there was something up there to the uh, top of that star fort, another one that looked like Mount Meru in the North Pole. And there's just a lot of uh, fascinating symbolism right here. This looks a little bit Eastern, uh, something that we would see associated with the I Ching. And I was just blown away. There's so many different things there. Before this video uh, got lost, I mean in the original video, I eventually took us on Google Earth and we looked at it from above and just this whole city is, uh, you know, old civilization, old architecture. And here I'm pointing out that this building appears to be buried. I, I don't know. You know, it looks like, uh, you know, this is, uh, is incomplete, an incomplete picture. I'm not sure what exactly is going on. But really fascinating, you know, like I said, these buildings and you know the architecture is of the old world of the old people i believe and there's a lot of silly things we could point at but we'll just leave that out since this is just a little short segment so that's it i do hope you enjoyed and have a blessed day please like comment and subscribe